As we know with Season of the Witch, we're able to craft the Dead Messenger Special Exotic Grenade Launcher, and I'm going to be pairing this with a classic Void Hunter build that uses the Gear Falcon's Halberd. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. So I've done previous Gear Falcon's builds here on the channel with a variety of weapons, you know, focusing on exotics and other good legendary weapons for, you know, Gear Falcon is undeniably one of the better PvE builds in the game for hunters again allows for like unlimited visibility volatile rounds constantly over shields potentially and just really good for ad clear in general but with dead messenger we have something really cool so again if you want to craft this you have to complete the box obscure mission when it's the exotic rotator mission under the legends tab and again if you want access to the trait perks which is the new portion here you need to complete it on the higher difficulty three times it's a random drop for the trait perks unfortunately you can either get thresh unrelenting or demolitionist demolitionist is easily the best one here but the other perks, right? Trinary Vision, one-shot handheld grenade launcher, projectile release, a fan of three energy waves on contact with the ground. Really good for eye control, especially if there's a lot. It just spreads out and blows everything up, which is great, especially with those volatile rounds for this since, you know, it starts off as void, which is really good in general. We also have quick launch, high velocity rounds, and then also short action stock. Again, the fundamentals pretty much allows you to change it between solar arc and void, but we're mainly going to keep it on void for this build. And then, like I said, I'm going to be using Demolitionist so I can get more grenade energy on kills. And when I throw the grenade, it'll auto-reload the weapon. And then it's other perk, which is very important here, which is turnabout. Using this weapon to break the shield of a combatant or a guardian using their super will grant you an overshield. So you get a free overshield when you break another enemy shield. It's literally just a free survivability mechanic. And like I said, for our exotic armor, we're going to be using the Gear Falcon's Halberd. Again, this is what it looks like normally. I actually got an ornament last season with Season of the Deep, which is pretty cool. But the main thing is the perk. See me, feel me. We have a lot with this one, but essentially your void weapons gain volatile rounds after you emerge from being invisible. When you are invisible and defeat a combatant while using a finisher, all your weapons gain bonus damage. You and your allies gain a reserve overshield and improve class ability regeneration these reserve overshields can be deployed by using a class ability again very good if you're solo being able to have free volatile rounds for void weapons and then also for your team as long as you are getting finishers on targets which is also going to be a focus with this build as well now under the seasonal artifact there really is only one that you need again depending on champions you can use other weapons and put on champion mods that's totally fine but the main one here is monochromatic maestro again dealing elemental ability damage increases matching weapon damage and elemental weapon damage increases matching ability damage the bonus granted is 10 percent for five seconds so pretty much our void abilities and our void weapons will have this trade-off of free damage now under the night stalker subclass for the super i personally like mobius quiver again it's the three shots you can do that twice really good for single target damage if you did want to do deadfall you know you launch at the ground it could tag a bunch of targets from you know far away generating a lot of orbs i think that's totally fine but i personally like mobius quiver for our abilities we're going to be taking advantage of gambler's dodge when i dodge near target i can get that melee back which is the snare bomb the main thing with the snare bomb is that it weakens targets and also disorients them as well for our movement i like triple jump but you can use what you like and then for the grenade i like the vortex grenade for our aspects we're going with vanishing step dodging makes you invisible again very simple. And then the second one is Stylish Executioner. Again, defeating a weakened suppressor volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. After performing a Stylish Execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens targets. The main thing here is that we have a bunch of opportunities to cause these debuffs to targets, specifically volatile and weaken. So we're going to be able to be invisible a lot of the time. Now for our fragments, I like Echo of Undermining. Your Void Grenades weaken targets. It's a minus 20 to discipline. Again, good still for taking out a crowd of ads. And with the grenade weakening targets, it does proc Stylus Executioner. So if you get a kill with the grenade, you get to go invisible. Again, also good to apply debuff to higher tier targets. Next up, Echo of Starvation. Picking up a Void Breach or an Orbit Power grants Devour. It's a minus 10 to recovery. But with Devour, pretty much once you proc Devour from picking up an Orbit Power or Void Breach, as long as you continue to get kills, you get full health immediately after every kill and you get a reduction to your grenade cooldown which is really nice next up echo of obscurity finisher final blows grant visibility this is a plus 10 to recovery again i said finisher is gonna be kind of a part of it again if you do want that bonus damage and reserve overshields for your team this can come in clutch also if you can't go invisible all you need to do is finish the target and you can proc invisibility with this the last one Echo of Cessation. Finish your final blows create a burst of void damage that causes nearby combatants to become volatile, but defeating volatile targets creates a void breach. Now, a void breach, 
you know, when it spawns, you can pick it up. It gives you class ability energy. But the main thing here is that since we're going to have volatile rounds for our weapons a lot, we're going to be creating a lot of void breaches as well. Next, going over armor mods, starting with the helmet. I'm personally rocking double dynamo, so it reduces my super cooldown when using my class ability near targets. Again, these do stack. And then I'm also using harmonic siphon, which translates to void siphon. So those rapid weapon final blows that I get with void weapons will create orbs of power. On the gauntlets, I'm taking advantage of bolstering detonation and focusing strike. So when I cause damage with my melee and my grenade, it gives me a cooldown to my class ability, my dodge, so I can take advantage of the invisibility more often. And then also impact induction, causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. On the chest piece, you can honestly rock whatever combination of resistance and reserve mods. Just note, with harmonic reserves, these cost two versus void reserves, which cost three. And again, harmonic translates to whatever your subclass is. So this is essentially void reserves, but it costs less. So just keep that in mind. On my boots here, I'm rocking insulation and innervation. So when I pick up ores of power, I get a reduction to my class ability and my grenade ability. And then lastly, void weapon surge. So our void weapons gain a small bonus to damage. While you have any armor charge, your armor charge now decays over time. Essentially, you gain armor charges by collecting ores of power. Minimum, you can have three armor charges. And with any of these blue mods, they now last 10 seconds. So if we have three armor charges, that's 30 seconds of this bonus void weapon damage. And then lastly on the class item, I'm rocking bomber. Reduce is grenade cooldown when using your class ability. Next up, which is Reaper. After using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. Then lastly, I personally like powerful attraction. Automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability, so you don't have to go out and like go search for those orbs. But if you did want to switch this out for something like time dilation, your decaying armor charge has a longer duration. You totally can. Time dilation takes that 10 seconds that I mentioned and makes it 15 seconds. So if you have three orbs of power, that's 45 seconds of that bonus weapon damage. But honestly, you're going to be creating a lot of orbs, so having that bonus weapon damage isn't going to be a problem. For stats to focus on, always focus on resilience. Again, if you have tier 10 resilience or 100 resilience, it's a 30% damage reduction. We talk about every video. It's a main thing to have in PVE just for survivability purposes. And then for the other three, I would focus on mobility, which is tied to our dodge. So we can get that dodge back even faster the higher your mobility is. And then discipline and intellect. Again, discipline is tied to your grenade stat. And then intellect is tied to how fast you can get your super. We don't need to focus on strength since we have gamblers dodge on. So again, the main thing is resilience here then mobility, and then you can focus on discipline, intellect. Now, outside of Dead Messenger, what are some other weapon options we can take advantage of? So, as we know, for the primary slot, we can't really put a void weapon up here, but what's really cool is that if you get the perk Osmosis on a weapon, so using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. So once you throw that void grenade, it turns escape velocity into a void weapon until you stow it, and it can take advantage of the volatile rounds with Gear Falcon's Halberd, which is really neat. There are plenty of guns that come with Osmosis, so if you see one or get one that has os Osmosis, definitely keep it, see if it's a good PVE roll. I got this one from the Gunsmith a while ago. Very happy I kept it. Again, for heavy weapons, there's a variety of heavy weapons. Again, I have this Regnant here with Explosive Light, Auto Loading Holster, good grenade launcher in general. Again, Retrofit Escapade, which you can craft again from farming the 7th Seraph Shield mission. This is the exotic mission rotator. So whenever it's around, you can farm, you know, that mission to get it to drop. Again, it is random, but it is what it is. Target lock, four times a charm very good as well. And then the Taipan 4FR, which is really easy to obtain. It's only like two red borders to even unlock it, which is really good, but it can come with firing line and triple tap. Really good for sustained precision damage. And if you're with the team, just makes it even better. Now, if you got through all that and you're still a little confused about how this build works, I'm going to break it down for you. But essentially, once you go invisible and come out of it, it's game on. So the main thing here is utilizing Gear Falcon's Halberd with the Volatile Rounds again. Volatile Rounds on any Void Weapon just makes it even better for ad clear. And there's multiple ways to go invisible. Again, we can dodge, you know, with Vanishing Step or with Stylus Executioner. As long as we kill a target with a Void debuff, again, we will go invisible, which is really nice. Once we come out, all of our weapons will have those Volatile Rounds. And we can continue reprocking Stylus Executioner with either our Snare Bomb that weakens targets, the Vortex Grenade, which will weaken targets, or the Volatile Rounds from the Void Weapons we are using. So there are plenty of ways to go invisible again, even if we don't have Vanishing Step. On top of that, we do have Echo of Obscurity. So if we get a finisher on a target, we go invisible and Echo of Cessation kicks in, uh, pretty much allowing that extra Volatile to happen around targets. Now note that whenever we kill targets with Volatile Weapons, it creates a Void Breach. And anytime we pick up an Orb of Power, which we're gonna be making a lot of with our Void Weapons, or a Void Breach, we get Devour. And note, if there's a target with a shield and we pop it with that Messenger, now we have an Overshield. So not only are we taking advantage of Invisibility, we're also taking advantage of Devour and Overshield, which are all three of 
the void buffs that you can take advantage of with this build. Everything else is honestly a bonus, so if you're running low on special ammo, again, your primary with osmosis, throw that grenade, now it's a void weapon, and you can get volatile rounds if you come out of invisibility, so you continue proccing it with the weapon as long as you have it out, and then whipping out our heavy for sustained DPS with whatever <laughs> PvE void heavy you are using. You know, with all of our armor mods, void siphon, we're going to be creating a lot of orbs of power with our rapid Void Weapon Final Blows, Double Dynamo. We're going to be dodging a lot near targets, get that Snare Bomb back even faster, take advantage of Stylus Executioner again. So now we can have an increased super regeneration rate. Again, on the Gauntlets, it's pretty much all ability regen. As long as we utilize our abilities, we can get those abilities back. And then with the Boots, every overpower we pick up gives us our abilities back even faster. And also Void Weapon Surges. Pretty much always constantly proc as long as we're collecting Orbs of Power. And then with the class item, Dodging gives us our grenade back faster. Also creating an Orb of Power on a weapon kill. And with Powerful Attraction, all the Orbs around us actually automatically get collected when we dodge, which is going to be a lot of the time, so we don't have to go out of our way to collect those Orbs of Power. Essentially, if you want a good just base Hunter build, especially if you're new to the game, Get Gear Falcon's Halberd and utilize this build. It's very good for ad clear, especially if you're trying to learn mechanics for like higher tier activities. Again, you can be someone that your team can rely on for that. And you do have good options for, you know, DPS with your heavy weapon and your super. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is my Season of the Witch Gear Falcon's Halberd Void Hunter build that utilizes the revamped dead messenger exotic i really love this exotic i've always enjoyed it especially in pvp the problem is that they nerf the crap out of it so i can't really utilize it a lot in that game mode anymore but it is what it is if you want to test out this build for yourself i have a dim link in the description with everything you need again it's going to copy over everything on the subclass the armor mods basically you can test this out for yourself and let me know if you think if you think there's a different fragment that i should use or if there's a weapon i should look into or something on the armor mods again build crafting isn't a one all be all thing there are some very good end game builds but most of the time things are adjustable so if there's something that you like to use again definitely let me know in the comments but if what you saw was valuable or entertaining be sure to drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and then turn on the bell next to notifications so you don't miss out on another build video here on the channel if you didn't know we live stream on youtube and then also have our twitch and kick links in the description if you want to follow those social medias as well again we are mainly going to be playing destiny 2 again we do pve stuff pvp you know dungeon raid carries crota carries and stuff like that so if you do want to tune in that'd be great i'm also going to be playing a lot of cyberpunk as well the new expansion is fantastic i love cyberpunk we will also be making cyberpunk builds here on the channel which is awesome and if you want to be proactive be sure to join my discord that link will also be in the description again people are looking to play destiny 2 together but we're also talking about other games pc tech anime and more lastly if you want to support the channel even more you can look into becoming a member if you don't know what a membership is it is essentially like a twitch subscription again you're going to gain exclusive access to the emotes the monthly badges and other cool stuff here that you can take advantage of in the comments and in live streams as well so if you would like more information all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe and i'll give you a rundown with all the details you need all right ladies and gentlemen it's been your boy we'll catch you in the next one Tschüss.